Today we have here inside, joining us inside the International Space Station Flight Control Room, we have NASA's Project Executive SpaceX for SpaceX, uh, Mike Korkachuk. Mike, thank you for joining us and welcome. Thank you. So Mike is here actually to give us an update. We've been talking about some of the um, removal and replacement of the uh, failed GPS on, on board the International Space Station. and He's here to give us an update on SpaceX launch and also on that GPS. So first of all, can you give us some, actually, uh, just tell me a little about yourself and how you came about, how you came here to NASA real quick before we get into the update. Okay. Um, actually, I started out at NASA in Ames Research Center. Um, and then I transferred here to JSC about the time that uh, Space Station Freedom was being re repositioned and renamed to uh, Space Station Alpha, and uh, been working in the Space Station office for over 10 years. Uh, did a little time in the Constellation program in test and verification, and then I've been uh, working in the COTS office as the project executive for SpaceX for um, at least five years now. Since. Okay. 2000, end of 2006. Okay, for a while now. So, um, tell me real quick, just what what is the update? What is what is launch looking like right now? I think launch is looking good for the 19th. It's early morning on the 19th, Cape time, uh, 4:55 in the morning. 4:55, so 3:55 Central time. Correct. And. Uh, so everything looks good for that. Now, let's go ahead and talk about that GPS because I know that for the attitude control system aboard the International Space Station, there are two, and it is necessary that both of them are working in order to do the rendezvous and docking with the uh, um, this, the Dragon. So if you can, just tell me a little about that. Yeah, we had a launch uh, constraint that uh, we want both systems up and operating for redundancy. So before la we give the go to launch, we wanted both systems up and running. Um, the, the whole rendezvous process uses GPS as part of the sensor suite for the rendezvous. And um, as you start getting closer to station, you want to do what we call relative GPS. So we're sending data from the space station on its position from those GPS sensors uh, through a communication system that SpaceX developed called the Cuckoo. It's a UHF communication system to the Dragon spacecraft. And then it uses that data plus the GPS data on board the Dragon to look at the relative position of the two vehicles so that uh, the two vehicles don't get too close to, to each other and we know exactly where they are. Okay, great. And anything new that's, you know, we're just on target for launch. Everything looks good, nothing new. Yeah, I think uh, we closed out a lot of work over the last couple of weeks. There was a lot of software that's been uh, rechecked and validated by the space station program. They did a end-to-end uh, -end test of the data system, as well as another stage test, uh, checking all the software functionality as it relates to space station. Looked at a lot of the uh, uh, changes that have been done on the software and gotten comfortable that all those changes were acceptable. Uh, the hardware has been in pretty good shape for the last few weeks. We did a static fire um, about two weeks ago out at the Cape, and uh, the first stage engines performed fine. Uh, all that data looks good, and the Dragon spacecraft has been closed out for flight for quite a while. Okay. Uh, so I think things are looking good. Well, good to go. Um, so real quick also, tell me about what I know that at times when we have launch, we have this whole, you know, the weather and that sort of thing. If something were to happen and the weather does not cooperate with us, is there a second chance opportunity to... Yeah, there's uh, another uh, planned opportunity on the 22nd. Okay. It gets a little bit earlier in the morning due to the, uh, the phasing, uh, trying to catch up to space station. And then after that, there's uh, about four more opportunities before we get into a high beta period uh, where it's just not going to be good to fly up to the space station for rendezvous. Okay, and in all those four other opportunities, are they consecutive each day, so on the 22nd and then after that, or are they set days? for? Yeah, they're set days. They're staggered a little bit, okay. um, and it it depends on the orbital mechanics. Um, I think it's the 23rd, 24th. I, I'm not going to hold you to it, but yeah. I just didn't know if it was consecutively right after the 22nd. Yeah, and then we'll need to work with the range, uh, sure. the Air Force, to make sure that those days are available um, and just kind of plan it out. Okay. So now how involved has NASA been with the development and the and the, the uh, pre-flight test and that sort of thing? 
with SpaceX, I'm, I'm assuming, pretty yeah. much involved, as you were talking about, but, you know, what was what was your experience? Yeah, as part of the Space Act agreement, we've been uh, looking at milestones since the very beginning of the development program. Um, we started out with an initial kickoff meeting and then went into what we call a preliminary design review. We had a number of NASA engineers looking at the preliminary concepts of the design, just mm -hmm. the high level. And then uh, we proceeded into critical design reviews, as well as uh, detailed reviews of uh, various testing events that had gone on. Um, as they were building up, they started testing the Draco engines on the on the Dragon spacecraft up in McGregor. Um, they incrementally did testing of the first stage. They actually lit the entire first stage and ran a full mission duration um, at their test facility in McGregor. Um, we did a large system thermal vacuum test where the whole spacecraft was in a thermal vac chamber, checking out the extremes of temperature and uh, making sure all the systems function during those extremes. Uh, EMI testing, uh, we did what we call a DRR, demo readiness review, which uh, looked at all the qual and acceptance reports. And we did a top level look at all those and made sure that uh, they had met their criteria for launch vibration, shock environments, uh, temperature, um, you know, the usual kind of things that we do on a spacecraft. Okay. So we've been involved. Uh, I wouldn't say that it's necessarily as deeply as involved as we've done on some other projects, but it, it's been a good review. Pretty and then well. they've gone through all the safety review process with the space station. So uh, it's been a sure. very thorough review. So lots of collaboration, right. collaborative work between um, SpaceX and NASA as well. Now, with uh, SpaceX, the um, it takes a lot to build a spacecraft, it seems. <laughs> but um, so if you can just talk, go through the um, just the why. You know, why are we looking to commercial industry to help us? You know, develop spacecraft. Well, um, there's been a push, I guess, that uh, NASA has been doing uh, flights to low Earth orbit for a long time now, uh, 40, 50 years since Apollo, and we've kind of got the technology down and. It seemed like it was mature enough to pass on to U.S. industry. Um, and the idea was that if we could get commercial industry to start doing it, um, it would turn out to be cheaper in the long run, mm -hmm. and it would give more of the NASA budget uh, the opportunity to be looking at building spacecraft where we can go deeper and further into space um, than we ever have before. Go on past the moon, out to L2, out to uh, you know asteroids, and potentially in the long run get to Mars. So it, it gives us an opportunity to use our budget more efficiently, mm -hmm. I think is the real um, benefit of going to commercial sure. right now. And so while we're not just after the, the cheaper ride, we also are looking, seeking for reliability, is that correct? Oh yeah, um, we definitely want the systems to yeah. work. And uh, you know, that's one thing that when you hear cheaper, you're sometimes thinking that it's gonna be less reliable. Mm -hmm. um, I know for a fact that SpaceX is very focused on trying to make sure that their systems work. They know that uh, as a company they have to make their products successful or they're not going to get new business. So they're very focused on making sure that their systems will work and that they have high reliability built into the systems. They may go about doing it a little bit different than we have in the past, but uh, it's always in the back of their mind that they have to make these vehicles work. Uh, or they're not going to have a, a long-term viable company. So in some cases, it's even more um, important to them that it, it's all successful than than other companies mm -hmm. on a typical uh, FAR-based contract. It is its own company's livelihood <coughs> to make sure that it is reliable as well. Now, so um, t do you know, can you tell me the contents of SpaceX? I mean, what is first of all, what is the cargo capacity, and then what is it going to be taking up to the International Space Station? Okay, well, not on this flight. Uh, the total cargo capacity is on the order of 3,000 kilograms. Um, on this flight, we're taking up about a little over 500 kilograms up and about 600 kilograms down. Um, in general, it's lower value um, cargo, food, uh, crew supplies. There's a, a small number of science experiments that are going up. Um, in general, it's this is still a test flight. We uh, initially had three test flights in the development program under COTS. The first one we flew uh, in December of 09. Very successful flight, launched out of Cape Canaveral. Uh, 
got the Dragon spacecraft into orbit, circled the Earth two times, mm -hmm. proved that the basic thrusters and guidance and control system would work, it pointed at Tidris, and uh, then re-entered and proved that the heat shield and the whole re-entry system worked well and the parachutes deployed well, and it was a very gentle landing in the Pacific about three hours later. Um, then we were going to gradually increase the complexity of the missions. The second mission was supposed to do a flyby of station and uh, check out some of the aborts and kind of maneuvers that might be necessary on a mission going to station, as well as closing the communications link between the space station and the Dragon spacecraft. And that was the, the primary objective of that mission. Then the third mission would have actually been a full rendezvous and berthing with the space station. Um, after a lot of review, we've decided that we can let SpaceX make an attempt at doing both those objectives on this mission. Um, and that's why we've redesignated it as a C2 plus mission. Uh, it's the C2 basic mission, and they're going to try and get some of those bonus objectives of the third demo. Uh, so we're trying to give them the opportunity of meeting all those milestones, and then if they do are successful, they can move on to the operational phase where we'd be flying more valuable cargo up to the space station on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, so you're touching base on something that I wanted to talk about. So the um, just space operations in general, how do you see, I mean, I, uh, what is the significance of SpaceX, this being a successful launch and docking to the International Station Space Station, and then also how do you see the evolution of space operations after that, you know, within the next decade? Okay. Um, well, I think this is a important mission, uh, but it is still a test flight. So I have to perfectly uh, caveat all our statements that, you know, this is a checkout flight. There's a lot of things that could go wrong. I mean, we've done a lot of work on the ground and a lot of testing to try and make sure that things work. But invariably, once you get into space, something doesn't work the way you necessarily thought it was going to work. Um, so. We'll look at the data and see how the mission went and then decide if we need another test flight or we can move on to the operations phase. Um, longer term, uh, I expect that we're going to go into a full operational phase. We'll go find what, a, if there is a problem, we'll find what the problem is, go fix it, and go fly again. And then we'll get into long-term operations where we're taking cargo on a regular basis up to the space station. Um, ideally, we'll be uh, moving on to commercial crew over the next uh, in the next decade. Um, some of that, the timing of that, I think, is going to be somewhat dependent on congressional funding and how much money they, uh, they give the program to, uh, to develop the commercial crew capabilities. Um, I'd like to see us eventually having a regular uh, commercial crew capability where we're launching astronauts from the US up to the space station on a regular basis. Um, and then I think in the longer run, we're going to be flying deeper and further into space on some of the NASA vehicles on a Orion spacecraft and, and going on out into space to L2 and, and uh, asteroids and hopefully do, doing some real serious planning for a Mars mission. And uh, contingency planning, is there any kind of contingency if something were to go wrong during this for this, for this particular launch since it is a test flight? Yeah, we've worked out all the contingency plans with uh, all the various agencies uh, since it is a commercial flight, uh, the FAA has a lot of authority, and they, uh, they have the primary role uh, with the NTSB to investigate a launch failure. Uh, depending on when in the mission it happens, there may be some uh, support from the range, the Air Force. Uh, as it gets close to station, there'll be some, it would be primarily the space station and NASA's role to investigate any mishaps. Uh, so we've got a plan laid out for all the phases of the mission and who's got primary responsibility. I think in all cases, uh, our office would be closely coupled with SpaceX doing the investigations. Great. Well, thank you again for coming. It's all very, very fascinating. Best of luck. I know you're taking off, you're leaving us tomorrow, correct, to head to the Kennedy Space Center where the launch will be taking place? Yeah, we have a flight readiness review, a Delta flight readiness review in the morning tomorrow, and then I leave for the Cape, and then we'll have a launch readiness review on Thursday. Uh, leading up to the launch on Saturday. Great. And again, that uh, SpaceX Dragon launch is set to uh, take place at 3.55 a.m. Um, Central Time. That is on May 19th. That is a Saturday. And we will have live coverage here for you on NASA television beginning at 2.30 a.m. Central Time. 
again, thank you, Mike, for coming, and uh, best of luck. Thank and you very much. And have a good trip. Thanks.